I think we should be live in five to ten seconds. And uh, and yes, uh, so so we are live, and uh, we can go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I'm Dr. Shilpa, and uh, on this uh, Teachers' Day, I wish everyone uh, a very very happy Teachers' Day. And on this occasion, I would like to invite Dr. Jay for this uh, very unique session on antagonists. Uh, Dr. Jay, as uh, you all know, is a pan India. Uh, OBGYN, who is one of the very, very few wholesome OBGYN, who is expert in many, many subspecialities of uh, OBGYN. He is a health influencer who is the director of uh, Project Pelvis, which has uh, almost 21,000 gynecologists across the world. And uh, he does live surgeries, which many of you would have watched uh, from many years. And I think uh, it's become very popular of late for the content, for uh, the systematic approach. And also, I think uh, one of the main thing is uh, for his uh, teachings, standard teachings uh, on endometriosis, on fistulas. So this is a very unique topic. As we know, antagonists have become very popular, both in modified natural cycles or in uh, mild stimulation protocols and also in managing OHSs. But here, I think uh, Dr. Jay will speak about something which is very unique and in unique circumstances where the dosage of antagonists is going to be uh, a little different. So over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Shilpa, madam, actually. Uh, so I'll straight hit on to the topic. See, practically, when we are trying to speak of antagonist, we all know that probably 95% plus cycles which people are doing across the country as far as IVF is concerned are switched to antagonist, right? And simultaneously, a lot of people, especially uh, since there is a huge mushrooming of fertility clinics, at least here in Mumbai or probably in Maharashtra, what has happened is a lot of people want to take up fertility as a practice where they don't want to do that Saturday, Sunday. Or they want to do that Saturday, half day, definitely no work on Sundays, you know, and, and the rest of the work uh, divided on Monday to Friday. Uh, we are not going to discuss the standard antagonist protocol, okay? We all know what is the standard antagonist protocol. Probably people know it better than what I know. It's a very standard dosage. People may have fixed or flexible protocols for using antagonist ones. The lead follicle is 12 millimeters, okay? And it is completely individual choice as to which antagonist to use. Some people like Cetro relics, some people like, like Gani relics, uh, you know, and once you have a particular loyalty to a particular antagonist, usually people don't like to change it. So we know all these things, you know, so we are not going to discuss that. Just one small line about uh, the understanding is that, see, antagonist will go and bind to the GnRH receptors. Okay, when it goes and binds, obviously what is going to happen is there is a competitive binding which happens. So whenever you have a competitive binding, uh, which has happened, okay, there is going to be no LH search, basically you are going to do all this headache to prevent your premature luteinization. Correct? Now, with this, uh, with this in your mind, okay, this is for your IVF. Now, how do you extrapolate this to your natural cycles or to your IUIs? Okay, for both of them. Correct? Uh, for any protocol which you want to use, okay, in this, our standard fear, because once upon a time we were taught that in GnRH antagonist regimes, Okay, what typically uh, what typically happens is that the antagonist is detrimental to the endometrial receptivity. Okay, so there were some studies which demonstrated that you know some amount of estrogen and FSH and LH receptors and all these things are present as far as the endometrium is concerned. And when you do a competitive binding with GnRH antagonist to, through these receptors, receptivity goes down. Okay, there could be slightly thinner endometrium when you are using a GnRH antagonist as compared to your standard endometrial sizes. So people were out of favor that no, GnRH antagonists don't try to use them in natural cycles, don't use them in IUI, because in IUI you are trying to achieve receptivity in the same cycle. Correct? One thing we all know for clear, okay, that forget this antagonist, the thing which actually is detrimental to the endometrium is high levels of estrogen. Correct. That is something which is clear. There is no second thought in that. 
everybody unanimously will agree to this so people did some more research and they find out that okay when you have gnrh antagonist which is used the tumor necrosis fa factor and all these thing goes down and as a result of which antagonist goes down now this is when you use a standard dose of antagonist which is 0.25 okay which is your standard preparation that is the standard preparation whatever antagonist you use this is your standard preparation correct now comes the role of you know using the half dose of antagonist so what is that half dose instead of 0.25 you give 0.125 correct that is the half dose of antagonist now let's be very clear in one thing whenever we are using a stimulation which is through an oral ovulogen like letrozol or whatever okay you are trying to achieve not more than two follicles correct maximum you will get is three let's be honest about it if you are adding hmg with letrozol in low dosages three is your maximum sometimes four but your maximum with letrozol is one or two in fact if you are using letrozol in your standard formulation letrozol is used for monofollicular development to be honest correct so you are targeting a single follicle there you are going to be having a situation which i am going to show you so i can share the uh, i i'll request shilpa madam to stay unmuted so i can share the whiteboard okay uh shilpa madam the whiteboard is uh, visible yeah. right yes yes it's visible okay fine so when we try to look you know see you are always trying to look at the synchrony which happens between the lead follicle which is developing okay and the endometrium all right these are the two things which you are always trying to get in sync with each other because that is where you uh, try to assess the endometrial receptivity okay now there could be many occasions irrespective of the stimulation which you have tried to use what is going to happen in that is that let's say this follicle is currently 16 mm to 17 mm okay endometrium has stayed at 5.5 okay so now what do you do in this situation you know that tomorrow when the lady comes to you this follicle will then grow in size and will become let's say 19 mm ओके यू आर ऑलरेडी अवेयर दैट अरे बाप रे ये तो 19 मिलीमीटर हो जाएगा ओके एंड व्हाट इफ दिस डजंट ग्रो व्हाट इफ द व्हाट इफ द एंडोमेट्रियम डजंट ग्रो इन दैट सिचुएशन व्हाट ऑन अर्थ विल यू डू करेक्ट नो सो दैट इज द वरी व्हिच पीपल ऑफन हैव ओके एंड इन दैट वरी इज द सरकमस्टेंस एंड द सिचुएशन वेयर यू कैन ऐड दिस हाफ डोज एंटागोनिस्ट माइंड यू your premature lh surge so just just remember this there is going to be a small peak of estrogen before the peak of lh okay and there is going to be a minor peak of progesterone as well okay this is going to peak slightly before your lh actually peaks okay when this estrogen is actually peaking here no when this estrogen is peaking here this estrogen will have a good effect on this okay if at this stage you are providing a half dose what will happen is the follicle will go from 19 to let's say 20 okay but it will not undergo any form of luteinization the corpus luteal changes will not occur okay nor will it affect the meiosis nor will it affect the oocyte which is present inside because till normally up to 21 mm there is no problem from 18 to 21 mm there is actually no problem as far as the oocyte inside is concerned provided you have been able to negate out his premature lh surge okay but what you are doing is that in that one day you are allowing this endometrium to go from 5.5 mm to let's say 7.1 mm now when this type of a formulation occurs 7.1 mm let's say 20 mm follicle has formed 7.1 mm and then when you trigger this particular thing let's say with 10000 hcg you have tried to ensure that that asynchrony which was otherwise going to happen that asynchrony has not happened okay now obviously comes the commonest question that why on earth you know will will there be something like this why on earth will there be an asynchrony in the first place this is this is something which is natural so in a natural cycle like this there should be no asynchrony god and nature will take care of all these things correct it act, it's actually not like that see every follicle no is unique as far as its own micro environment is concerned correct when you are stimulating a follicle with letrozol there could be a follicle which is harboring a beautiful oocyte and this beautiful oocyte is going to form a beautiful endometrium remember 
all this follicular development and everything is ultimately controlled by the autocrine paracrine factors which are secreted by the oocyte correct this low dose hcg is going to be something which is going to really help you in patients with low mh whom you are trying to stimulate naturally for your iuis for your natural cycles okay what is the indication to use uh, letrozole in a low mh patient it's simple there are so many low mh patients who cannot afford ivf who have done an ivf cycle cannot afford a second ivf cycle because irrespective of what people say the cost of ivf in our country still varies between 1.5 to 2.5 lakhs so once somebody has spent that money they don't have the money to do the second cycle they have used up all their reserves they are trying they've come to you for trying out something which is low cost when you use a low dose hcg protocol just with letrozole you want to ensure that for that 10000 8000 9000 whatever the patient is paying for your stimulation okay in that despite low amh you give them the best possible synchrony okay and if you are able to assure them of a fantastic synchrony in a situation like this you will avoid all sorts of cycle cancellations if you are avoiding all sorts of cycle cancellations and if the husband's parameters and the fallopian tubes are normal you honestly don't really know how good or how bad it will work okay so there is often this doubt that why then give low dose why don't why not to give the full dose only why should you give low dose see remember one thing the antagonist will itself dissociate away from the receptors after like 12 to 16 hours okay and for the new receptors to come in it will take another 6 7 hours 8 hours time due to which we you know follow this 24 hour difference between the two antagonist correct between the dosages of two antagonist it is proven without doubt that this half dose is as effective as full dose when you have follicles which are less than 2 and 3 in number okay when you have let's say 25 follicles giving half dose of antagonist in fact even that should be enough but the fear in our mind is such and the research is such that okay when you are you know having multi follicular development that is the time when you give full dose of antagonist you do, obviously don't have a uh, premature lh surge let's say when you have 10 oocytes or when you have 27 oocytes with the same dose of antagonist correct so that means that dose of antagonist is actually sufficient to take care of that ovary but when you give a heavier dose you are exposing the endometrium to that risk okay of a full dose of antagonist which may cause the fear which we have that the endometrium will go little out of sort with an antagonist and then it cannot be used in the same cycle which may result in a lower pregnancy rate and that fear in your mind will be taken care of when you use the half dose antagonist so the commonest question which people ask is if i use one half dose antagonist what will i do of the other half okay you will throw it simple okay the cost does not really go down this is simply done in order to ensure that the endometrium catches up nicely with the follicle for that one day usually in your iui cycles usually in your natural cycles you will really not need to give antagonist for two or three days trust me if you are giving it for two or three days there is something which is wrong with your stimulation and the possibility is very high that you will have to convert that stimulation into an ivf stimulation because if you are giving your antagonist for two to three days it's really not warranted in a natural cycle intercourse or in your iui protocols this is just for that one day where you want the growth to catch up especially in patients with low amh because in low amh patients though the follicle may grow you are not really certain as far as the aptitude and the quality of that oocyte which is present inside okay maybe because of that the endometrium is not able to catch up okay and you are just providing this additional time for that oocyte ke bhai theek hai i am giving you one day more okay try your best and in that you will have patients who will end up doing well as well as your other normal responder patients if you are adding this half dose of antagonist okay so uh, honestly practical purposes uh, since uh, since we are very well known as a clinic which doesn't do the donor program we obviously get a lot of patients with low amh there is no doubt in that and these low amh patients not everybody can afford ivf because ivf in low amh would require multiple stimulations correct and as a result of this trying protocols like this especially for young women who are age less than 35 okay and giving them a support of iui along with this if it is indicated based on the parameters dna fragmentation whatever you have assessed will really help you in your practice and will will really 
help you achieve some good outcomes which you are probably lacking okay so this was the entire context of using the half dose of antagonist i am sure people who are not using it should probably start using it in such type of special situations people who are already using it are already aware that it gives you this type of outcomes but if there are any questions one or two questions i'll be willing to answer and rest of the questions on whatsapp okay so uh, let me just uh, uh, ask you so this is uh, in addition to that low dose hcg protocol that you are using this is one of those uh, i think additional you, you can you can use it with anything you can use it with low dose hcg protocol you can use it with extended letrozole protocol you can use it with standard letrozole protocol you can use it with anything okay and uh, you say that it depends on the number of follicles that we decide on the dosage of uh, antag so do you uh, kind of uh, take into consideration the age the bmi or like you know i mean lh level see uh, uh, yeah honestly we don't we don't do lh levels for any of these patients prior to giving antagonist that is just one thing which i want to tell you but we definitely do lh levels on the day of trigger okay we do the lh levels on the day of giving trigger if the lh is more than 15 these patients have had an lh surge already no point adding an hcg trigger they will any which ways end up ovulating within the next 24 hours yeah. okay uh, we don't use any progynova we don't use any arginitric sachet or we don't use any vaginal sildenafil vaginal sildenafil increases the vascularity in the endometrium arginitric probably increases the vascularity in the endometrium your additional estrogen in the form of estradiol valerate hemihydrate or whatever which you want to provide to the patient at this juncture okay has no role in increasing the endometrial thickness okay it is best left to that follicle to develop that endometrium okay if despite your trial of having good follicles the endometrium is not developing all right that means there is something wrong with the endometrium okay so you really need to investigate that endometrium but we definitely don't we definitely don't give uh, estradiol valerate in midway in between the cycles to add up to the vascularity okay and any cut off value of amh that you uh, choose these uh, patients for uh, antag low dose antag no no you can use it for anything let's assume you are coming you are coming you are traveling for a workshop somewhere and you know that patients iui is supposed to come on a sunday you can give half dose no see 19 mm going to 20 mm over one day will not affect the oocyte okay and you can shift your trigger from friday to saturday which can allow your iui to happen on monday morning instead of sunday so that is something which you can try as a just to you know micromanage your stuff better over a weekend can be tried okay so do you have a standardized protocol where, like how you have for hcg um uh, like that do you have something like that where in you check you have a checklist where you just click on this and then you at yeah so if if the if the lead follicle is 17 mm on the day of doing the ultrasound and the endometrium is less than 6 mm then we would add a half dose antagonist to all those patients and call them on the next day yeah okay i think that was it mm. yeah. yeah so uh, thank you so much everyone i hope all of you have a wonderful day ahead and uh, thank you so much for listening to this